Rock and roll. Hey guys, welcome to that Polo Show. Dan here. Mick here. I don't know why I started this show today, Dan. As we discussed before we started filming, none the wiser when it comes to this particular topic. So that sounded big. What are we doing? Okay. Yeah, I preferred it with the rat off, to be honest. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so we're looking at rat pedals. Uh, yeah, rat pedals. So rat pedals, they've been around since 1978. They first wow. came out. Uh, from Kalamazoo, uh, the uh, Proco company in Kalamazoo. Michigan. In Michigan. What, what else is Kalamazoo famous for, Dan? Uh, Gibson. Yes. These dudes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's where the original Gibson plant was. Well, something in the water. Yeah. Actually, best not mention Michigan water at the moment, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's also that instrument that you play, isn't it, in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Kalamazoo? Well played, sir. Well played. Uh, right, so... If you ever want to laugh at a gig, get a kazoo out. And instead of playing your guitar solo, play the solo on the kazoo through the microphone. Honestly, for the first hundred times, you'll get a laugh. <laughs> Right, this is the white face. Uh, when they first came out, the available commercially, they looked very much like this. This is a reissue. Um, but yeah, it's commonly known as the white face rat. It's a it's, it's a hard clipping distortion pedal uh, as opposed to, say, something like a tube screamer. So if we have listened to a tube screamer... Who, uh, just before we do that, who are famous people that have used rats? Oh, man. Everyone... So Gilmore used them for a number of years. Graham Coxon... I think, um, I, could, I, dear think mate. I, I did speak to Gray, uh, to uh, David Gilmore on the phone once. Did so you? I don't know him, but I'm going to give him a okay. <laughs> one of those. I've been to his bars, but it doesn't, doesn't count. Yeah. So, yep, Graham Coxon. Graham Coxon. <laughs> kind of a full honk. Um, yeah, he, the, a massive part of his sound. Uh, but, like, they've been around, they're really common in the 80s, and loads and loads of people use them. It's a staple, isn't it? I mean, my, mm. my impression of the rat is where... Um, yeah, your kind of bluesy middle of the road guys use tube screamers. Your edgy dudes, yeah, used rats. Is that fair? Yeah, or not really. A guy that I I know uh, was in a soul band and he loved his rat. Right. Um, there's something about the way that it clips, which is really edgy. Uh, but you can turn the distortion down and turn it up, and it just it's a different sort of breakup. Sure. So why don't we have a quick look at that? We've got a Tube Screamer and a DS1 on the board. Now, these are sounds that we know. Yep. Tube Screamer is a, the, the soft clipping. If we just have a listen to that. So we've got two amps today. We're using the um, the Marshall Plexi 1987X, 1987 50 X. watt Plexi reissue. Interestingly, I was talking to Martin Kidd on the phone on uh, a few days ago. Right. Because I've been asking him about how we can mod that to make it more pleasing. Mm. And he said, have you ever used it like Robin Trower? Yeah, right. Robin Trousers. <laughs> and uh, called Robin Trousers because <laughs> went round to his house one day and he had the craziest, craziest, craziest trousers on. So he was Robin Trousers from that okay. moment forward. Anyway, he said, have you ever tried your plexi in the way Robin Trower likes it? And, I, and he said, bass at zero, treble at zero, middle on 10. I was like, nah. Can't be true. There you go. This is how it sounds. <laughs> Does sound a bit bassy, actually. Good doing the Sounds great. This is a massive tangent. Well, the reason he does it like that is because on a traditional plexi, that high treble channel is so piercing. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll do as we were, the, okay. the middle on 10, the bass on zero, the treble on zero, but and I'll just add in a bit more of that high treble channel. Okay. Ah! 
That is such... In this context, it's we're so dry. It's such a harsh frequency. So obviously when you turn it up, that's what gives you that lovely overdrive. But he reckons... Sorry, I will finish this, I promise. <laughs> Martin reckons that that original um, bright cap that they put on there was a mistake. Really? Yeah, he reckons it was a mistake because it... It's awful? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's awful. So that's how we're going to run that. Anyway, apologies for that, that long tangent. This is the Sovtech. And on together. That'll they're, work. They're both barely breathing. Hardly on. And it's loud you probably saw from the db meter how loud it was glorious okay sorry you were saying massive right. tangent massive ah. tangent so I wanna, so let's have a listen to the tube screamer and ds1 first yeah tube screamer because it's a pedal that we know and it'll give us a nice reference point to start from yeah okay here's our tube screamer <laughs> Interesting how you can hear that overdrive and the, almost separate from the clean yeah, sound yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Because the amps are set so clean and they're really dynamic, I think you hear it more because you're still getting that attack from the clean thing. It's yeah. Kind of like, uh, like, it's um, quite urgent. Which is, our, this is our typical, we're going to call this the typical rat, That's the rat that I went out and paid for with great British pounds, handed them over, got that one from the counter. So that's Recently. the standard, yeah, yesterday. Okay, fine. Then in which case, let's hear those two together. Okay. Well, I want to hear the DS1 first. That's the Tube Screamer. Right. All right. So... Uh, common like soft clipping, warmer type thing. If we go to DS One, this is the um, an old Boss distortion classic DS One sound. Just oodles of bottom end compared to the tube screamer. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. guitar just doesn't seem to want to play in tune today, so I might I'll pers persist with it a little bit more. Okay, and this is the rat. <laughs> So much high end, uh, so much low end. Yeah, it's Isn't massive. Here with the telly a sec. So it's really thick. Sounds awesome. It does. It uh, so it it has uh, like the so it's got this asymmetrically the the clipping diodes in it, which just means it doesn't clip evenly, and also the the fabled LM three hundred eight chip that's in there. As far as an audio chip is concerned, it's rubbish. Right. But in this context, it works brilliantly. So it's definitely definitely a big part of the sound. So the tube screamer is a an op amp 
with clipping diodes overdrive circuit is the rat the same kind of circuit yep it so it does have it's it's the 3m the the 308 is the op amp yeah and it it has diodes but the diodes are in a different place okay than within the tube screamer the tube screamer is what we call a soft clipping circuit yeah whereas the rat is a hard clipping circuit and the, uh so when josh was here we're talking about yeah, soft clipping and hard clipping. Jo Josh goes into that in great depth. That's really interesting. Uh, Josh Scott. Josh Scott Jay from JHS. Yeah. Uh, but interestingly, we're talking about tube screamers and the and the the whole uh, the legend around the the op amp and the tube screamer, um, the famous Texas Instruments four five um, five eight D. Th that's the one. And actual fact, the that op amp isn't doing a great deal. Of, of clipping in the tube screamer circuit. But no. in the rat circuit, the op amp is very important. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. It's... So I remember getting my first rat, because as you are when you're young, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you buy the stuff that's available and the what was available, the boss, the, whatever yellow box boss was available at that time. So OD... SD1? Yeah, SD, SD1 and then OD3, one had a turbo switch on it, etc., etc. Right. Let's go through all of those. And then someone says, you know, you should try RAT. And I can remember it being a very different sure. experience that I didn't like because I didn't understand it. One thing I don't understand is the filter control. What does that do? Okay, so the, the filter control is it's just a tone control, but it's set up backwards. Right. Right. Like a, you know, like a Vox. How yeah, that, that thing is set up backwards. It's the same. Is it same just a thing. tone cut then? Because I can remember mine sounding really nasally. Have a have a try this out. Yep. Simon's going to be really annoyed with me because uh, it's not attached to the board, so all his lovely masking is just going to move around. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry my, that's, that's my fault. We'll that's only have fault. to do it once. Uh, so that's, I mean, it doesn't, it's a really unique sound. And you can see why when that came out, it caused quite a stir. Yeah, I mean, it's really distortion-y. Yeah, it, it's very kind much of, so. It reminds me of, um, I mean, there's even elements of um, Op Amp Big Muff in there. To me, yeah, for like sure. The thickness of yeah. the of the of the overdrive, for sure. Killer, yeah. So that's that's brand new, out of the box. What you can get today. How many English doubloons did that cost you, Daniel? Ah, uh, boy, oh boy, that cost me I think seventy nine, eighty pounds. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you know, not crazy expensive. Yeah. The other versions we have, we've got some. Some more expensive ones, some cheaper ones, some older ones. Um, like I said, this is my white face reissue. When they first came out, that's what they looked like. They, they had no LED, um, and also they had mini jack power in the back. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, this now, in actual oh, fact, I don't. Gonna, just going to help Simon out here. Sorry. Mini, mini jack in the back. Mini jack in the back. So I'll do the holding if you like. You just point. Yeah. Very good. Right, <laughs> but yeah, so no LED, but it's you know it's it's quite obvious when it's on. Uh, like I said, the filter control was just a tone control, but wired backwards. Now this is the reissue. I was never really fond of this one. My favourite is my old Goodbye. big box. Right, you get out of there. That's only exactly. That's only for You're visual done. purposes. No more for you. Uh, oh, we really want to hear it. We really want to hear it. <laughs> so right. I heard the new one. Now this is um, the old, um, you know, from. I really should know the year, but the you know the old big box Proco Rat. And so did it look like that when it first came out? No, no, no. So it looked like when they first came out, they looked like that. Look like that one, yeah. Yep. They've released nine or ten different versions. Okay. 
Well, there's the you dirty rat as well, isn't there? Uh, there's the well, you dirty rat. There's, there's the, the fat red. rat. There's there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, but well, they're all still based around the circuit with little tweaks. What we should have said about that one is this broken doesn't actually work. Can't it's hear broken. It. Can't hear it. That one is done. It's broken. Yeah, can't um, hear it. But <laughs> of all the rats I've tried, uh, of the original Proko rats, this is my favourite. Okay. So have a go on the original, and then I'll top you over to this one. Okay. Right. Oops, sorry, dude. More mindless power chords coming up. There we go. similar very very similar but this one has a mid-range that i prefer yeah how is it with the telly so i'll go between stuff and the old one yeah <laughs> There's something about that that one. It's got a mid-range thing on it that's really nice. Yeah. One of the things I always struggled with when I was, because I, I think I got it and took it off immediately because right. perhaps because of all that extra bass that I didn't know what to do with. Okay. Bear in mind, I had a very weak guitar at the time and right. I was using Mesa amps, Mark III, always played really loud. So I think what happened when I stepped on the rat was... There's so much bottom end. So much bottom end, and yeah, it yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. it took all the mid range away. I don't know if it did or not. Okay. Let's hear it with a strap for a sec. Sure. Because um, what I'm guessing is with all that distortion, it's going to make the mid range like huge amount of bottom end, but actually might take away some of the vocal. Yeah, so the way the, the mids. Yeah, the way the mids are voiced in this sort of pedal is so important because unless. That's the voice in a certain way. There's going to be not a lot there. The DS1 is a good example of that. The DS1 for me, it's a lot of bottom, a lot of top, but there's very little mids going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, you hear that? That's when I was saying earlier. It sounds really filtery. Right. That's that sound. It really does. That's so that, that mid is in a really unusual place. Let me go 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 again on that a sec. <laughs> Obviously, there is so much more gain there than a tube screamer. I'm just trying to work out why I didn't like that all those years ago. It was killer. But okay, but the way you had the tube screamer up interacting with the amplifier yeah, yeah, would yeah. have been very different. See, we've got the amplifiers very open and very clean, you know, so it's letting the, the rat do what it does, yeah. you know. And not a huge amount of treble response coming from the amps today. Either. No. Not, not an amazing amount. It's, it's interesting. The rat is, is really bright. Yeah. 
But you look at the circuit and they've dumped off so much treble in different places in the circuit. Right. But it's just the, the nature of that circuit. There's Still so much top there. end. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to hear it with this. Awesome. <laughs> Gating there, something's gating. That's the that's the rack. No wonder they were associated with noisy Herberts. <laughs> <laughs> the, now, if we take that sound though, I'm going to pull the distortion down on the big one. On the big one. On the new one. Slightly noisy pop there. Yeah, on the new one. So pull the... <laughs> pull the... And you hear... The gating thing you're talking about as yeah. soon as the distortion starts. So this is, the circuit isn't... Sort of isn't really working just yet. So, but as soon as it starts working... And you're immediately into that that heavy thing. And the other thing about it is it like on the tube screen where it cleans up, you don't really get that effect on this one. It's why There's no, there's no like cleaning up as such. No, it doesn't. It's more like a fuzz in that respect. Uh, 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 more like a, like a muffy fuzz in that respect. Sure. It's still, it reminds me of that for some reason. Yeah. I know it's not the same thing, but. It's more frequency wise, yet, because it's. Do. Okay. I might hazard a guess. Let's see. Oi! Too much gain, but anyway. So yeah. how was he using it then? How was Graham Coxon using it? Because he didn't sound like he had that much overdrive. Look, nothing makes any sense to me about how Graham he used uh, an old Marshall and a rat and that's the sound he got the you know it's like how the, he's he's an enigma that guy he used two of them rats yeah, oh, yeah just he he it banging into each other you can see I'm having a guitar nightmare today literally no idea what well to be fair and it's not a sound that I I really like the rat, but and but the times I've tried to use them in my rig, they've just been too big, you know, and sort of and not not defined enough. If I was just doing rhythm stuff, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. But I have struggled with that sound of my own rig, which because we haven't done a rat show before, you know, so it's not something we, we either of us naturally gravitate towards. But when you hear it in like this, it is such a cool sound. It really is a cool sound. It's a it's. Yeah. Okay. So when all these others come along, then mm -hmm. obviously like the tube screamer, like mm -hmm. the various cornerstone effects, uh, overdrive of of ages. Everyone goes. We're going to do one of those. Right. So if I was going to do one, I'd want some control over the mid range. Okay. And I'd want to take some of that bass away. Okay. So is that 
is that what all these others are doing? No. This one looks very <laughs> traditional. So, uh, yeah, the Rattler, very traditional. Um, the the big thing with these is the original uh, chip. That chip. Actually, apart from the JHS one, he's found a different chip that he, they like better, or J Josh likes better. But uh, they all are heavily, in, you know, heavily inspired by that circuit using that original chip and there are different uh, so if you imagine with diodes so we've got different options then with diodes the sort of diodes that we use okay we can change them for germanium diodes or leds but as you say compared to a tube screamer the clipping diodes aren't doing exactly the same job because the op amp is a bit of the distortion sound as well, whereas it isn't really in the tube screamer. No, not until you get not yeah. really cranked. Not as much. Tube. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Should we have a listen to some of these others? Yes. Then? Okay. So let's have a listen to the to the Rattler from Jam Pedals. Uh, Hello, Yanis. Yes. Hey, Yanis. Uh, I think we should go to Greece. Okay. Because you've got Jam, you've got crazy tube circuits, you've got Sakalis, and then something else turned up the other day. Okay. Uh, in fact, that crazy pink thing. Is that from that Greece? I put on Instagram, I think. Okay, so I think we should go and have us some Savlaki and. Oh, can we do that? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Awesome. All right, done. Let's do it. Uh, let's have a listen to this one then. So we'll, we'll we'll compare them to the new rat. Yep. All right. That'll be our common denominator. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> That's what I was hoping. So one of the downsides of the original rat, if you want to run it at low gain, it just loses so much yeah, of its yeah. business, doesn't it? This seems to improve that. Okay. Do you know if, if that was a stated aim? I can tell you. Well, well, I have all the information. While, while he's doing that, uh, can you hand me the other one? Ah, uh, <laughs> this. So that's in. this is in Jam Pedal's standard series. This is Jam Pedal's custom shop. <laughs> It's got this leather, I guess snakeskin, but it's leather jacket on, and it's really deviant. <laughs> it's like an S and M pedal because it's got this zip <laughs> on the back. And when you open it up, you can see. Oh, what's in here? <laughs> Peek in there for your voyeuristic tendencies. <laughs> it's just it's so, just so it's, cool. It's so wrong. Uh, anyway, the, the circuits in there on its little leather jacket there. Uh, Yanis, you're a interesting character. Anyway, yeah, that's in the custom shop mode. Uh, it also, presumably, does something else because it's got switch on it as well. So high gain, low gain okay. mode on this one. So that's for, that's for another day. But yeah. Um, but so yeah, this it says it's a faithful reproduction of the very first right rat. Oh, I like the way it does low gain. Yeah. Really, really sounds like ace. The way it does. And the um, tone control is around the correct way, right way. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, killer. Okay. So moving along. Yeah. This is the Soothsayer from Archifex. Actually, we have a quick, quick a quick go on the strat with sure. that one. With pleasure, mon brave. Okay. Uh, so original rat, so rat two. <laughs> Okay. 
just throw a bit of delay and reverb on there because it just sounded so good. That, that was awesome. Unbelievable. I would. Everything I thought about rat type pedals has just been turned upside down and on its head. The mid range in that is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Lest we forget, this is a Fender Stratocaster. That's magic. That is what a great sound. Absolutely killer. I've, okay. just, I've just woken up, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> right, so perfect. Right, um, right. Now, this is the Suso from Archifex. Hang on. Uh, is the Tube Screamer currently before it or after it? The tube Screamer is currently before it, but I can change it. No, no, just uh, stick the Rattler on again and just okay. put, the, put, the, put the Tube Screamer on as well. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Okay. Moving on. This is the Soothsayer from Arc Effects. Uh, this is a really popular one. When I was doing some research, people were saying, you've, you know, you've got to try this one. It's really great. Now, it does have a bunch of dip switch options on the inside. However, <laughs> um, we're just going to go with the way it comes. Um, yeah, I, you, if, if those, presumably, what do they control? Right. They're just different levels of gain. Yeah. Um, so you've got um, this switch one is a high low gain switch. This switch two. Oh, sorry. They do control control also some different uh, LED um, diode options as well. Oh, okay. Right? So where like so the common thing if you've got diodes in it, right? The common thing. Imagine you've got pair of diodes and they're clipping both sides of the waveform. The common thing with the three position switch is that you turn off one diode yeah. that gives you asymmetrical clipping and then you turn off both diodes and you're just getting the clipping from the op amp. Yep. Yeah. Right? So that's a real common way to do it. I think most of the other mods do this. Um, the What the Soothsayer does, it gives you some different uh, diode options so when you when you when you go to the the diode mode, you can choose between LEDs, which is what we've got in at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then you've got uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical clippings from here. So if we um, if we just uh, the way it comes out of the box, like in the center position with the SUSE now. So again, I go from the from the normal rat. So immediately that feels closer to the original one because it's got all that extra bottom end. This one yes. definitely seemed to... I don't know whether this tone control was carving a bit... Uh, uh, if As you increase the treble, it was taking off some bass as well. Okay. Maybe. Felt like it was better defined this way. So further away from the original sure. rap. But this one feels closer to that. Right. Under the fingers. Just try it with that. Pick up a sec. Glorious guitar. For anyone who doesn't know, it's 1961 Les Paul Jr. Uh, from... Well... Don't say more than that.
I personally love the way this one cleans up the bottom end. Right. And I wonder if there's options to do that in there as well with the dip switches and stuff. Sure. Sure. I, I will. I'm, I'm going to have a look at that. That's a lot smoother. Yeah. That one. What I, what I did there while Dan was um, chumming away was um, took the gain right down just to see how that would feel. Mm -hmm. It felt really nice, actually. And as always, whenever there's a clipping option in a pedal, I tend to always prefer the least. Clipped, yeah, right. The most open. Yeah. So, but, so that is without the diodes. Yeah, That's just so the just amp. the just the op amp. Yeah, but then as the gain went down lower and I in, increased the volume, adding some extra clip in then from the from the diodes mm -hmm. was quite a nice place sure. to be. Sure. So loads and loads of gain, loads and loads of clipping. It, it sounds thick, fat, messy, and confused, which is great. if That's what you're after. What I like about that is you can have any option of the above. Yeah. You can have it clear and open sounding and high headroomy. Yeah. Or you can have it. Yeah. No, very, very cool. Um, I, yeah, there's. But there are a lot of options inside. Um, but yeah, this is the way it comes. So on the left hand side, we had the LEDs going. Um, and then the. Uh, the middle is no, no clipping from the. Diodes, yeah. and then on the right was asymmetrical. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. 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 Right. Uh, moving on, we have JHS. So our mate, Josh Scott. So what he does is he takes your standard Rat 2 and he mods them. Yep. Okay. Giving you some different options. Uh, he also uses a different chip right. that he prefers. So let's have a listen to this. We've got... Um, the green LED and the white knob sound different as well. They do. They do. <laughs> um, right, here you go. Okay, me again. Yep. So, rat two. I've just worked out what Josh does. In all his pedals. Right. Makes them really loud. With loads of headroom. <laughs> okay. That's why they sound good. Right. Well, I think I think we've got the, the middle position, which is no, that was no diodes. Yeah. And then we've got the different diode options here.
so if you listen to the, that's the noise level, very similar game levels, that's the noise level from Josh's. So. Okay, low noise floor. Yeah, low, low noise floor. Sounds like ace though. Sounds ace. Give it a try again. There's a mid range in that. That's really cool. That, oh. I am remembering what, about why I thought it was filtery because when you take some of the treble off, it does leave quite a vocal. Yeah, right. Mid range. Sure. Um, you don't have a neck pickup. Uh, I was just thinking about what a neck pickup might do to that very vocally mid range. What's that then? Telling me to breathe. Uh, Thank you. Watch. Don't forget to... Interesting that you like that option because with it like that, it's akin to transistor distortion. Like you, you know how you and remember you saying, I think I've just worked out that I like transistors. That's what's going on there. The two, the two different sides in the op amp, right? Completely doing stuff. Completely open. Yeah, yeah. I like that very sort of fluty vocally, not Santana, but you know, a step towards dear old Carlos. Oh yeah. <laughs> You met Carlos Santana? Yeah. Guitar tones like you know a woman's body, man. It's like a curves. That's what he said to me. He was talking about a woman's body and tone. Bless you, Carlos. Um, Let me just try it with the neck pickup on this one.
Awesome. Killer. Okay. Uh, let's... <laughs> <laughs> Help my OCD out for a second. Okay, right. Moving swiftly along, I want to just go, go quickly to the Iron Horse. So this is from Morris Audio. Yep. Um, our mate. Her cult. Cult. And all you lovely people. Of yes. Morris, making fantastic things. Um, also uh, showing large in the delay and reverb contingent today. Yes, they. We have the. Yes, we've got them just together for a little bit of fatness. Okay. Again, we have. The three options talking about clipping diodes clipping again. Clipping diodes. So both clipping diodes. Yeah. One clipping diode, no clipping diode. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Have schwangage. Uh, let's go. Interesting. Even with level on zero, there's, there's still. sounds fantastic I uh, think the lower gain modes in it as well I love the way that you can do that that you can go as we found out with the original rat one of the or at least sorry the modern standard rat is in its glorious place it's glorious mm. but then if you want to use it for different kinds of sounds it becomes very compromised sure and it uh, and I, I probably start I came in here today going oh my goodness me what are you going to do to that circuit to make it 
you know, does it need whistles and bells? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 On the strength of, I mean, this just sounds totally awesome. Yep. Straight out of the box. Yep. But on the strength of these three so far, yes, it does, because you can get really brilliant low gain. Yeah. Especially when you mix that amount of um, distortion with the amount of clipping. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Very, and I love cool. that there's so much level available as well. Yeah. Uh, particularly, well, in all of them, actually. Yeah. Huge amount of level. Yeah, because the, I mean, the original doesn't have a huge amount of level. So, mm. the, like, here we go. That one there. Yeah. You know, it, the, the output's cranked. Because think about what happens when you use both of those diodes and the level drops. There's more distortion, but the level drops. And, mm. of course, that's the original circuit. Um, so you take them out and... Boom. Take them out and then, absolutely... Lovely days. Okay, so finally we've got the Black Secret from Moore, and now this is, again, it's it's a copy of the circuit. Um, yeah, this is our nod to a budget, or a more budget offering. Yeah, yeah, we we have been asked. Um, with, happened. The yeah, please year. include a, a mower or a Joyo yeah. or a Tone City or something like that. So we we we've gone for the mower today. Mower, mower. Yep. Yep. More. Moha. We live in the West Country, so whenever you say Moha, there's a cow connotation. I'd never thought of that. What? <laughs> Every time I see a Moha pedal, all I see is like a Frisian cow staring at me in the face. <laughs> right, where are we? Black Secret. Yep. up very well yeah yeah it's there or thereabouts doesn't have the thickness of that no um i like i'm guessing that the the vintage mode is the gainier higher heavier heavier clipped and the turbo mode it does say turbo on there doesn't it it does well done <laughs> um turbo awesome uh sounds less clipped and louder and more headroom yeah yeah so like like the non-diode 
yeah. option or, or a symmetrical clipping. I don't know what the price difference is between the Mua and the Rat 2, but it's certainly more versatile. Yeah. Yeah. But arguably, let's have a quick listen between this and the Rat 2. DB meter hitting there. <laughs> Probably got quieter, didn't it? Not, not where I sat. There was, <laughs> there was just a small amount of high end going on as well in those harmonics. <laughs> there you go. That was instructive, Dan. I tell you what. I tell you what. I didn't think I would say after this video. I'm going to try that on my board. Awesome. As my because at the moment I've got the uh, J Rocket dude doing the sort of high gain rock option which it sounds does sound really awesome. brilliant but I'm there's something about that that I really like so I'm yeah. gonna try it I'm gonna try it awesome. I think clearly the amps we've used today are big and my amps sound very different from either of those yep. so That's, yeah um there's a whole other discussion to have there definitely one day Excellent, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. A big thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, in the US of A. Rift City Guitar of various locations. And is Australia. Uh, would be Paddle Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Excellent. And also a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to our web store, which is thatpedalshowstore.com, and purchased uh, a T-shirt or... Uh, strings if they're up yet they're or... going to be up soon excellent i've done the artwork excellent i do yeah actually yeah they look great <laughs> very cool um what have we got hats and bits Books, and pieces pencils stuff. everything go and buy there. some stuff it's what helps pay to keep the show running so thank you yeah for thank anyone you. who does yeah thank you guys really appreciate it there we go have a great week we'll see you soon bye <laughs>